Track one row not selected. Hey everybody, yeah, I'm recording back on Windows again. And today I figured I would uh, start a new series. This is BK3, Buck Your Honor Day Boxing 3. Uh, people have been asking me to do this. Uh, I know I haven't finished BK2. I will probably get back to that. Um, and I do also apologize for not uploading stuff for a while. I have been doing some other stuff like going through uh, all the episodes of Being Human US, which if you haven't tried that show, that show is awesome and the ending is awesome. Although I cried for about an hour afterward. Um, but anyway, that's that's not really relevant. Um, yeah, so this is Bakurano de Bakken 3, which I think translates to The Great Adventure, or Our Great Adventure. Um, this has been out for a while. Uh, I think since, I want to say, August, August, August 2013. Uh, and really, it's, it's, it hasn't really been translated. I think the translation project started around the end of 2015 and um, I got it in 2016 but it it was recently pretty much completed back in July I just haven't been in the mood to play these types of games but uh, yes there is a translation dictionary that you can purchase uh, I will link to that uh, I think by default he asks for five dollars uh, which, you know, I, I don't think that's bad at all. You might be able to donate less, but really, if you can afford five bucks, you know, it's not bad at all. And the dictionary updates are free, you know, so it's your choice. If you want to purchase it, you can certainly play the game without the translations, but you'll have to translate it yourself using other translation things like Google Translate, or I think there's an add-on for NVDA, uh, but those don't those don't work as well, and you miss the story. And I think I think this is better. Um, so basically, what you do is you buy the translations. Uh, you'll you will be given a zip file. You unzip that. You place the file. It's a, I, th I, th I think it's called dictionary.dat. You place that in the main folder of the game. And when you load the game, it will tell you, you know, hey, thank you for purchasing this. And then it will go ahead and update the dictionary if it finds there are new updates. Um, man, okay, let's see. Just like BK2, you run the installer, you hit enter, and it will copy the files to your C drive under a folder called Nyanchan Games. I don't know how you say that. It's Japanese. Anyhow, um, Edit. Blank. what I've done is I have pinned the play file to the classic shell start menu. Mini speed. Play. Location. Play. C. Nyanchan Game LC. Sedilla. I yeah, okay. And that LC Sedilla thing, that's Japanese characters. So I'm going to hit enter. Unknown. And we're going to load the game. Loading. Bakurano de Balkanai II. There's the little rain thing. Our great adventure, I, 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 the lone wolf. Title menu, load game, load the previously saved game. Okay. Uh, our great adventure, I, 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 which I guess is three. It's just not saying it right. Um, that's the music. The music is very, very good. Just like in BK2. Uh, 
New game. Create. Check for updates. Preferences. Preferences. Atmospheres. BGM volume. Press. Let me actually turn that down a little bit. That is rather loud. Uh. Preferences. BGM volume. Okay. Our greatest new game load game. So you hit the up and down arrows. Load game is at the top. New game creates a new data file and starts the game. New game, that's obvious. Check for updates. Checks for a new version of the game online. Check for updates. No updates found. Our great adventure. New game. Load. Check for up preferences. Change various options for the game. Preferences. Exit. Exit the game. Exit. Preferences. Atmosphere. BGM volume. Okay, if you've listened to my BK2 demos, this will be pretty much the same. So from the from the, the top. At BGM volume current value 860. Background music. Atmosphere sound volume current value 2020. Basically you hit enter on these and then you can hit up and down arrow to change them. And then hit enter to save. Speech output current method auto detect. Speech output, I would recommend setting this to auto detect. That just makes it easier. Uh, this supports Outputting to the clipboard, Sappy 5, uh, I believe NVDA, and JAWS for Windows, and some Japanese screen reader called PC Talker, and don't ask me what that is. I don't know. Check for updates on startup current setting on. Check for updates at startup. That's pretty obvious. That will check for any game updates. Control type for mobbing current setting. Arrow keys to run slash hold down control to walk. Okay, control type for movement. Now by default... Select preferred control type for movement. Yeah, I'm gonna turn down that music. Arrow keys to walk slash... Arrow... Okay. Ar so you've got two choices. Arrow keys to run slash hold down control to walk. Pressing the arrow keys to run... Or... Holding down control and pressing the arrows to walk. Or... Arrow keys to walk slash hold down control to run. The arrow keys held down to walk and holding down control with the arrow keys to run. I'm gonna leave it at the top. Arrow keys to run slash preferences. BG at speech control output combat log current setting off. Output combat log? I think this saves the combat log somewhere. I'm not sure. Page up slash page down scroll. Page up and page down scroll the log. I think. Language select. Language select. Language of Japanese. English. Japanese. Auto. Uh, auto, English, or Japanese? Japanese, English. Preferences. Check. Could output page of blank. Save settings. Settings. New. Check. Preference. Atmospheres. BGM. Uh, check. Now let's turn this down. I'm gonna hold it. Okay. That should be. Preferences. Settings. Upgraded. New game. Load. Okay, so that's basically it. Um, and that little noise means that you're at the top or the bottom of the slider. Man, and this music is pretty. Um, new game. Creates a new data file and starts the game. Okay, let's start a new game. Welcome to our great adventure, I, I, I. I'm gonna hit enter. As with BK2, you scroll. This game is the sequel of our great adventure 2. Yep. First, please choose a save slot to use. Please choose a save slot. One. There are 10 slots. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now next, let's just go. 3, 2, 1. Next, please decide your player name. In the next screen, an input box will be shown. Input your player name there, then press the tab key. Bakarano de Balkanai II. Edit. Blank. I'll just call myself Chris. Your player name is Chris. Is that okay? Bakarano de. No, yes. New data has been created. Alright. Here we go. Game setup has been completed. Now the game begins. This is the sequel of the R Great Adventure series. Do you want to recap the previous story? If you haven't played the previous games, it will help you understand the game world. What would you like to do? I know that. Let me play. Please recap. Now I think the recap is in Japanese. Let's see. A large house at the edge of Crystal City. One day, Chris who is living there with his friend sees a group of bully boys desperately searching for food. Oh! Oh, it's actually translated! Um, this is kind of cool. So, I know I haven't played BK through BK2 completely, but um, actually this would probably give you a good idea of the storyline of that game. So let's actually 
go through this. I did not know that he translated this. Screaming give us food, they attack Chris's house. So people wanting food. A few days later, Chris has a strange dream. Person 1, Nuu. No! Person 2, shit, I'm hungry. Uh. Person 3, but uh, that hurts. Yeah, so they're hungry apparently. Person 4, what will happen to us next? Person 5, my daughter. Child 1, boo -hoo Someone crying apparently. Chris, cruel, too cruel. Strange voice. <laughs> yeah, okay, sorry, this this speech engine. <laughs> die, 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 I, I, I. Okay, someone wants me to die. All the food is yours and. Several days later, Chris decides to take his first journey to find out the truth. At the house next door, he sees a violent bully boy and is forced to fight with him. Yeah, th this is cool because I I played through BK2 a long time ago and I missed a lot of this. So yeah, this is cool. The bully boys are stealing food here and there because they ran out of things to eat. The enemies are not only the bully boys. A strange man, calling himself Yamajin, kidnaps a child for an unknown reason. Chris successfully rescues the child and heads to Ark Hire City, a large city next to Crystal City. However, Yamajin ambushes Chris and makes him teleport to one of his labs. Chris's friends are captured there. He manages to rescue them and return them home. At the northern exit of Ark Hire City, Chris faces a monster that Yamajin owns. He manages to defeat it and is given a weird key from the dying monster. The key is a very important key for Yamajin. It can unlock the path to his true lab. Chris takes the path being navigated by the key and finds the truth. The thing that caused this circumstance is called Yoko Tank. Okay. What is Yoko Tank? Is it a human or something else? That's still unknown. However, there is a series of logs that Yoko Tank and Yamajin were exchanging via email. Tracing the logs, Chris finds that Yoko Tank's objective is to collect food for himself. Also, Yamajin seems to have been working for Yoko Tank. While they were carrying out their plan, a boy called Chris appears, which is annoying and uncomfortable for them. Yeah, and I think it 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 uses the name that you type in to do this stuff. To terminate him, the Megasaurus, the extremely large monster Chris had fought at the exit of Ark Hire City, was dispatched as their ultimate weapon. However, the monster, being defeated, Yoko Tank no longer has a way to get rid of him. The loss of the secret key is Yamajin's fault, because he asserted that the Megasaurus wouldn't lose against Chris. Anyway, Chris now knows the root of the problem. His objective is to find out the truth behind their food monopolization plan. And stop it. So... At the top of Flame Mountain, Chris faces off with a large fighter robot called Death Robot. Oh, that's what the... that's what the Death Robot is. Okay. See, I didn't know all this stuff because I was playing through BK2 and it was like... Okay, so I'm going to, through all these different places, but you miss everything because it... That game is not really translated. Struggling with its accurate shooting program and powerful explosives, he manages to destroy it and pulls the robot's core out of its body. After successfully passing the mountain, he sees a small house. Entering there with no special reason, Chris meets a man living there, known as the Analysis Maniac. The Analysis Maniac is interested in analyzing things. He willingly accepts the analysis of the core Chris obtained from the robot. From the analysis, he finds out the location of Chris's final destination, which is called the Fortress of Yoko Tank. Getting into the fortress, Chris managed to find out why the whole thing happened, defeat Yoko Tank and stop his plan. His objective seems to have been completed. However... A few months have passed since Chris stopped Yoko Tank and started to live with him and his friend Yamajin. Yeah, so it's not a complete overview of the previous storyline, but yeah, that's kind of cool. When they were gathering for breakfast, as always, it happens. A massive group of bully boys rush into his house and start attacking. Bully boy, today's objective is not food, but you. The bully boys declare their intent to murder Chris and attack him. He makes them escape by asking for help from Yamajin. A few days later, he is called by Yamajin and Yoko Tank. Or actually, this might be mo huh. They ask Chris to stop the bully boys and give him some useful things. Chris started his second journey to find out the reason for the bully boys' attacks. Oh, so I guess the first thing was a recap of Bakuron and Dibakan 1, which I 
don't think I'll be playing because that one's not translated. However, before he left home, he was faintly aware of the reason. Yoko Tank had stolen food from them, but it had already been returned. If they were satisfied with food, the reason must have been caused by their grudges against Chris who killed several bully boys. And the bully boys, as it calls them, are the, the Geki Shonen or... I don't know if that's a mispronunciation or a mistranslation or if that's how you say it in Japanese, but... Yeah, that's what those things were when I was playing BK2. At the house next door, he encounters a bully boy and defeats him, causing him to drop an unknown metal chip. After that, the city was suddenly filled with monsters and Chris rushed to destroy their origin. In the grassy area outside of Crystal City, there were thousands of monsters strolling around who all had the same metal chip. After reaching Ark Higher City, Chris was captured by a false policeman. He managed a jailbreak and escaped. Yep. He heard that the origin of the monsters might be west of the city. He immediately headed west. There was a large factory millions of the metal chips were produced there. Chris encounters the death robot originally created by Yoko Tank and discovered it was working as the factory's surveillance robot. After the investigation, Chris returned home to show Yamage and Akor in the factory. When he opened the door, he found a cruel situation. The bully boys have broken into his house and are being violent to his friends. Laughing, they say. Bully boy one, hey hey hey, our target has finally come. Your friends are there. They will die soon I guess. Bully boy two, oh, you look sad. I never imagined that a guy who killed our friends like a machine had a heart to feel sad. Bully boy three, who do you think has caused this situation? Bully boy five, lots of our friends were killed by you three months ago. Like you did to us, we are going to kill the friends who are important to you. Is that wrong? Bully Boy 6, it's natural, isn't it? Ye. Bully Boy 7, and, finally you came. The person whom we have wanted to kill the most has come by himself, not knowing anything. How funny. <laughs> Chris has known. That was the reason. He killed too many of the boys' community members. But still, Chris has chosen to fight. To survive, to save his friends. On the battlefield after everything was all said and done, Chris stood alone. The boys were not wrong at all. Their friends were killed by me. I never apologized. It's natural that they try to avenge me. I will never be forgiven. That's the truth. Because I know that's the truth, I cannot allow my previous stupid action. And as I said before, the music in this game is, is top-notch. Why did I fight at that time? It might have been avoidable. At that time, and even now. Did I have to fight? Did I have to kill them? I keep remembering the time I was fighting against Yoko Tang. The boys certainly were obstacles for me and they attacked me a number of times. But, did I have to kill them, all? Oh. Come to think of it, I never saw bully boys until that time. I sometimes go to Ark Higher City to shop, but I've never seen one of them. Did something happen to them perhaps? The deeper I think of it, the deeper I regret. The person who caused lots of people to suffer is, me. Why haven't I noticed such a simple fact until now? Why haven't I been able to notice? Okay. Uh, a voice interrupted his thinking. The voice was strong, but not violent. Calm down. You're still standing up there? That's not a good idea. Sit down anyway. My name is, hum, you know, Ultra Bully Boy. Oh, that guy. If you still draw your sword, that's okay. But I have some things that I want to tell you. I wanted to tell you something, so I didn't participate in that battle. I have been watching it. Chris screamed. Kill, kill, however, he didn't care about that word and continued. Oh, whoops, sorry, I guess I skipped it, but I guess it was like, kill... Kill that thing. I told you to calm down. I told you that I wanted to talk with you. Who said that you must be killed? It's a bit of a long story, but please listen. After that, he explained the bully boy's current situation and its relevance to the metal chips. When Yoko Dang's food monopolization plan was being carried out, the bully boys, who originally lived in the mountains, lost all their food. They could go to the nearest city, but no one gave food to them because they had no money. That changed the bully boys. They had to become cruel monsters who slashed any obstacles to survive. They were just like wild creatures then. People were afraid and wary of them, and captured them. That was the reason they started to be called bully boys. However, their lives changed again because Chris stopped Yoko Dang's plan. They were able to return to the mountain and some of the members who had been captured and forced to work in Yoko Dang's fortress were also released. However, they were split into two groups, the one who knew that Chris had rescued their fellow members from Yoko Dang's fortress and stopped his plan, and the other one who considered Chris as, the fucking guy who killed our friends. That finally resulted in the outrage of the hardliners. Uh, <laughs> the fucking guy that killed our friends? 
First, they directly aimed at Chris's house though, they were starting to be controlled by someone with the power to shoot the unknown metal chips inside their bodies. The Ultra Bully Boy kindly asked Chris to save them and promised that he would support Chris. Yeah, and I think what they're talking about are those chips that you find when you play BK2 because they're used to clone, uh, to clone these guys. And so Chris began another journey. To get a more precise analysis of the core he obtained at the chip factory, Chris headed to the Analysis Maniac's house again. However, the path was hard. Thousands of robots invading, millions of monsters being continuously generated. Everything blocked Chris's path and turned towns into battlefields. Saving towns, destroying Yamagen's lab which had been used for producing robots, passing the mountain, fighting with the bully boys, making friends with them rather than killing them, and he finally handed the core over to the Analysis Maniac. Right after the Analysis computer loaded the data in the core, it transformed into a large robot and started attacking Chris. He blasted it to pieces and found a thing that he saw before. It was the same core used for the death robots. The Analysis Maniac managed to pull the data from the core and found out that there was another robot factory somewhere. The location could be analyzed by retrieving another core, which was at the factory being developed in the area where Yoko Dang's fortress was originally located. Successfully obtaining the said core, Chris got into the largest factory and destroyed the facility. All right. Meanwhile, Crystal City was under serious attack. An overwhelming amount of monsters had rushed there and tried to erode the city. Yemijin, Yoko Tank and only two Bully Boys, who were capable of fighting against the monsters, have been desperately resisting. Chris warped to the center of the battlefield and saved the city. After the battle ended, Yamajin remembered that the original creator of the cores wasn't Yoko Tank, he actually bought the tech from a madman. Chris asserted that the man was the Bully Boy's controller. Dot. Finally, he intruded into the building of the man, who called himself Punisher. Punisher, okay. Pathing a path through lots of traps and monsters, Chris managed to reach the final room of the building. Punisher exclaimed. I have had a dream. It is. To get rid of unnecessary things from this world. Sorry about that. That was the speech having some expressive thing. In the world, there are a lot of stupid and necessary fucking things. <sighs> For example, useless people, people with no money, unnecessary buildings, stupid statues, silly monuments. I can rave infinitely. Uh Those fucking idiots who never help us. Poor people. Yes. People who are given money because of their poorness. Money is used for them, then the city or town gets poor, too. Poor people are making poor governments. Don't you think that this is kinda a vicious circle? Yes, it's nothing but a vicious circle. Yeah, and I think it's, it's doing that because there's an... Because <laughs> there's an exclamation mark after the yes, so uh, sorry about that. <laughs> if we get rid of such things, this world will be a much better place. <laughs> so he wants to get rid of a lot of stuff and useless people, apparently. Okay. Hey, there are more fucking things. Next, insects. They wasp wasp and wasp. All they can do is wasp. Everywhere around us. Not only that, they sometimes buy door sting us. Just fucking shit. Flies are dirty. Yeah, so I guess he, he hates the entire world and... Okay. When I'm feeling fresh air through opened windows, they suddenly get in and wasp around me. Don't you think you want to kill them in a more complete way? It is not enough to squish them with my hands or foot or a bunch of newspaper. This is my 10-year conclusion. Once I had a conclusion, I start thinking about how to achieve my objective. And, I, an extremely smart guy immediately found out the solution. Animals, insects, plants, other things. Everything should be controlled by me. If I control everything, all works as I want. Yeah, so you want to take over the world, basically. I can make my utopia by myself. Isn't it great? Awesome. I am the top person in the world. I have the strongest power in this world. No other person can stop me. I am the administrator of this world. Ha ha ha. Ha 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 Right, okay. The mysterious chip, a mad invention that enables free control over anything it hits. It can even make clones of whatever it hits. Chris challenged Punisher to a battle for its generator in Punisher's most advanced creation. Ah, so the chips can also control things, okay. His ultimate weapon is the death robot. However, everything was different from the previous models. The truly completed, ultimate masterpiece of the Death Robot, Search and Destruction Robot, version 2.0++. plus plus. Oh, I hate that thing. In the final battle, Chris managed to destroy the robot. He saw through the madman's lies and forcefully pulled the chip out of him. He was actually being controlled by what he had created. Oh. And that fades away. Chris saved the world again and is now the mayor of Crystal City. Hey, I'm the mayor. The city was redeveloped and now flourishes. 
Punisher found a new job and is now working every day for Chris and his friends. Everything was going well. Until... Well... This game, I guess. No one knew that the peace would be threatened once more. Data Chris, total playing time. Zero hours, 16 minutes. Okay, um, that is a recap. So basically that went through the last two games and now... Well, they're being threatened again by something or someone. So, we are in the data menu. St stage select moves to the stage selection menu. Choose a stage. Status displays player status. Items list current items. Tactical items list current tactical items. Collection items list current collection items. Weapons list current weapons. Shields list current shields. Manage data manage this save data. Preferences changes various settings. Exit saves the current data and quits the game. All right. Manage data manage. Uh, the only real new thing in here is data. So so let's go in here. <laughs> Data management, online backup, opens the online backup menu. Yeah, you can back up your saves online. You basically type in a username and password. Save slot. One, press enter to change. You can change your save slot. Player name, Chris, press enter to change. You can change your player name. Back. And go back. Data Chris, st stage. Okay, um, that's gonna wrap that up for this one. I was planning to play the tutorial, but, uh, that recap took a little while, so I'll just stop it here. And, um. Audacity. Okay, and, uh, we will continue. So, I hope you've enjoyed this, and I'll be back.